this will work. Preparing to live stream. Got it. All right, I'm gonna get started and we'll then we'll see about getting you in, okay? Okay. Okay, wonderful. Oh, and look everybody in here. Hello, everybody. Welcome this evening. Welcome, welcome. All righty here. Welcome, everybody. It's great to have all of you. I am going to work on our um, interpretation room shortly. And then I am having our other counselor, Ms. Poe, join us in here as well. All right. Okay, I think that our Spanish interpretation is working with Armando. So thank you so much. Um, he is already in the room. So para los que no hablan inglés o para los que quieren escuchar es en español, pueden hacer clic en el globo ahí abajo um, para eh, traducción en español y Armando estará uh, haciendo la presentación con nosotros. Gracias. Okay. And I'm asking um, Ms. Ho to come join us. I'm promoting her to a panelist and we have a great number of attendees. We have 111 people, which is wonderful. And um, we're, I'm gonna get, wait just another minute or so to get everybody working with us on here. And then we'll get started. Let's see. All right, and this is great. We have about 124 of you on here, so thank you so much. So I'm actually going to record. We are also uh, live on YouTube right now, and we would love to thank all of you for joining us this evening. Um, my name is Nicole Ellens Martin. I am one of the assistant principals here at Aragon High School, and I would love for my colleagues, uh, Ms. Sanguinetti and Ms. Ho to introduce themselves too. Hi, good evening. Thank you all for being here, looking at the participants and we're at 140 right now. That is amazing. Um, I'm Leah Sanguinetti. I am one of the department chairs of the counseling office. I am responsible for students with the last names A through FIE. So um, thank you for being here. Hello everyone, my name is Josephine Ho and I am the other co-department chair along with Leah Sanguinetti. And I am a counselor for the students and families with the last name L-I through R-O-O. -O. Welcome. So glad that you can all join us tonight. Thank you so much. And again, um, for those of you just joining us, we do have the interpretation room in Español. Pueden hacer clic en el globo para escuchar la presentación en Español con Armando. And we do want to welcome our PTSO representatives, although I am not sure with all of the 150 plus attendees in the room, which one, if you could, if you are one of our PTSO representatives and you would like to say something to welcome our future Aragon families, could you raise your hand with the raise hand feature so I can promote you to a panelist, please? Um, they may not be on yet. And so if not, we might have to pause or also do it at the end. But I wanted to see if we have any of our PTSO um members that would that are in there and if not we will wait till the end Let's see no one's raising their hand quite yet so we might wait till the end for a ptso for our ptso um wonderful members to to speak to all the future families the way that our webinar works tonight is very interactive we would really like for you to answer or um, ask us questions and we are here to answer all of them we have enabled the q a feature down at the bottom 
where uh, you just click on those little bubbles, you type in your question. Your question actually doesn't appear until we answer it and we can answer it either live or typing the answer. So we see it and we will type the answers and put them out so everybody can see those. So please feel free to ask away. That's what we're here for tonight. And we have pre-recorded certain parts of the presentation just so we can be really busy at typing responses to you. We found that with our middle school presentations that we did last week that were fabulous, it was really helpful for us to be able to focus on typing answers quickly or responding in the moment. So a few of our chunks of the presentation are recorded, and um, but we are, we are here live and, and ready to answer your questions and we'll have more live Q&A sessions like this at the end. And we also had some members who couldn't be here this evening presenting on the webinar because our actual open house for current families is going on right now. So on, on the other side of my computer screen, on the windows looking out at center court, we have many current families who are visiting classrooms. So uh, thank you so much. Um, Ms. Sanguinetti, Ms. Ho, is there anything else you would like to say before we get started with our, our first part? No, I think you said everything, um, but please feel free to ask questions. That is, you know, we want to make sure that we are answering everything that comes to mind. Excellent. Okay. Thank you so much. So we'll get started with this first portion. So at Aragon, we have both counselors and advisors here to help support your student and families. So um, starting with Ms. Sanguinetti, she oversees the students with the last name A through FIE. And then following, we have Mr. Alipot, who sees students from FIG through LE. I, my name is Ho, I oversee students with last names LI through ROO. And then we have Dr. Cervantes, who oversees students ROS through Z. So counselors do work very closely with our students and families. Fortunately, we also have a group of uh, other advisors who are here to support them as well. So advisors, uh, we have both Mrs. Leota, Mrs. Castillo, and then Mrs. Stretch and Mrs. Bruce. So what is the role of the school counselor? So we overall, we provide academic support, personal social support, and also career post high school support as well. So in terms of academic support, we help them uh, choose their classes, we review their transcript, making sure they're on track for not just graduation, but for four year colleges, if that is what they choose to. For personal and social support, many times students um, like to come in and might want to talk to us about things that are going on. Um, maybe there's some stress that they would like to share with us that's going on in their lives. Um, so we do have that connection with them. Uh, and also we, some of that stress might require additional support in terms of finding that balance between uh, extracurricular activities, finding um, family responsibilities, and also academic workload. And lastly, we also help with the post high school, uh, post high school support, whether it is college or it is straight into a career. So we do help students explore. Uh, we start off with ninth and 10th grade using a program called Naviance. And from there, they do take assessments, personal assessments to learn more about themselves. Uh, what are their interests? What are their strengths? And that, uh, that program we use throughout the four years they are here with us. Along with the college and career uh, support that we provide through Naviance, we have two individuals here who are a wealth of knowledge. We have Mrs. Tizak, she is our college and career advisor, and we also have Mrs. Mawala, who oversees the scholarship and financial aid, which is very important, especially during students' senior year here. However, they do not only see students during their senior year, they definitely help students starting even their ninth grade year. So if you have a student who is interested in learning more about colleges, please check out uh, Mrs. Tizak or Ms. Mawala for more information. Okay, so as we're moving along uh, during this exciting time of your students starting high school, um, we really want to make sure that you understand the 
different requirements that um, your student has to fulfill in order to earn that diploma at the end of their senior year. So we have our graduation requirements, uh, which are a set of subject area requirements. And we also have a credit uh, summer, uh, a credit requirement that is needed for graduation as well. So I'm gonna review these with you because this will help um, when choosing classes for their ninth grade year. Uh, we have social science. Students will be earning 35 credits of social science, which equals three and a half years. Your student will be taking English all four years of high school, equaling 40 uh, credits. Math, there is a three-year requirement, equaling 30 credits. Science, we have a one-year biological science requirement and a one-year physical requirement, um, equaling two years, and that's 20 credits. We have a world language requirement of one year, 10 credits. A visual and performing art, also known as a VAPA, that would be one year and 10 credits. Career technical education, also known as CTE, is one year, equaling 10 credits. Students are required to take two years of physical education, equaling 20 credits. One semester of health, equaling five credits. And all of your other courses, um, they trickle down into our elective categories and students need to fulfill 40 credits worth of electives. Uh, there is a credit total to earn that diploma, which is 220 credits. Um, our school runs on a semester system. So we have a fall semester and a spring semester. Uh, for every class that's taken in a semester, a student can earn five credits. So that is why at the end of the year, if a student passes their classes, uh, they can earn 10 credits for each course that they are taking. A term that you'll hear often in high school is the term A through G requirements. Um, and basically what the A through G is, it's a list of subject requirements that all students in California must complete in order to be eligible for freshman admissions to either the California State University or the University of California college system. Most of the private universities and out of state uh, colleges will fall into a line with the A through G requirements. So if your student is following along with these requirements, um, they will be eligible to apply to a four-year university in their senior year. And just to review what those uh, A through G college uh, requirements are, we have placed them next to our graduation requirements here on this slide. And the, the beautiful thing about our graduation requirements and the A through G requirements here on our campus is that most of our courses are aligned with the A through G requirements. Um, you will notice that there is one difference that is highlighted for the college side, and that would be in the area of world language. We require one year to earn a diploma and to fulfill graduation requirements, but you will see that for college, uh, they are wanting two years of a world language. It must be the same world language for those two consecutive years. And you'll notice that um, in the A through G side, you'll see uh, some credits that are in uh, brackets. And what that is, that is the recommended years uh, that the colleges are hoping that students will fulfill. So for example, in uh, area C, which is math, the, re, uh, the minimum requirement is 30 credits, which is three years, but you'll see that colleges are really encouraging students to, to take that fourth year and earn 40 credits, okay? Um, what you'll also see is that um, on the graduation side, there are certain classes that we require here at Aragon, uh, but the four-year colleges do not. Those would be courses like health, PE, or even our CTE requirement, okay? So you might be thinking, well, you know, do, do the grades that my student earned in ninth grade count for college? And the answer to that is yes, absolutely does. Um, from the minute your student walks on campus here to the minute they graduate, everything that they do really does matter, um, not only for themselves, but for their plans for after high school. Um, so we will encourage your students to try their best um, when they join Aragon. Um, and we will support them throughout their, their process here to make sure that they are meeting their goals for what they'd like to do after high school. What I also like to uh, talk to families about 
is taking six classes versus taking seven classes in a day. Um, and I want to make sure that families are aware that students do not need to take seven classes. Um, if anything, I think we really recommend our incoming ninth graders to take six classes. Um, so this is a, a, a nice layout of our subject areas that are required for graduation, and it breaks it down by year. So uh, what you'll see here is that students can take six classes each year and actually end with 240 credits. So there's a little bit of a 20 credit cushion embedded in there already. And they could fulfill their graduation requirements and then some, um, even with taking six classes. That seventh period is really uh, put aside for different programs that students may wanna take um, that they wouldn't have the room or the space to do um, if they just took the six classes. So a sample ninth grade schedule, um, every student is gonna be coming in taking English. They will take a semester of health and a semester of ethnic studies. Every student will be taking mathematics. Every student will be taking biology, PE1. And that sixth period is really for um, a world language, maybe a visual and performing arts or other elective. And then that seventh uh, period, like I had mentioned, is really optional. And it's for those programs like AVID, leadership, publications. Maybe your student is needing a, an additional support class to support them with their other five or six classes. Um, that is really what we would like to see that seventh class used for. So now let's go through each subject um, one slide at a time. So we'll begin with English. At Aragon, we have two types of English classes. Both of them are college prep, meaning um, they are at grade level. We start off with English one. English one classes are really uh, designed to prepare students with academic skills for grade level, ninth grade level high school and beyond. Um, it is a college prep class. So this is really for students who is reading at grade level, has a good control of their grammar, uh, reads at a moderate pace and able to spend some time if needed in the class to read as well as to um, maybe work on some of the writing within class. So the English advanced standing, these are really uh, it's the type of class that's maybe a little bit more challenging because there's no work that is done within class. All of the reading and writing is done outside of the class. So therefore, we really suggest students who are interested in reading, who enjoys reading for pleasure, enjoys critical thinking analysis into the book, the text that they just read, then this is the type of class that they would find um, interesting and to be and, and rigorous and to be at their level. Again, you do not need to take AS in order to take a, advanced placement classes during your 11th or 12th grade. However, it is designed in preparation for those classes if that is what your student is interested at that um, at that time. Then we move into social science, which is also known as history. We have one semester of ethnic studies and then followed by one semester of health. So your student may start with ethnic studies or they may start with health. Either way, at the second semester, the students will uh, exchange and go into uh, basically flip flop into each other of the class. Mathematics. So we have here, uh, if your student is currently in math eight at their middle school, okay, it, at their middle school taking math eight, they will be entering in at algebra one, which is on track as a ninth grade class. Some of our eighth graders are currently taking algebra right now. If that is you and you're currently taking algebra at your middle school, then you would be entering into Aragon at geometry. Now you can see there are other classes that follows afterwards, um, after geometry. There are three different types of classes because we are actually expanding our mathematics program here, which is wonderful. Um, instead of giving all students one track of math, we're opening up 
and allowing students to really uh, think about what type of mathematics they would be interested in. And this is something that we are really happy to get started this year and, to, and is already gaining so much interest of our students. And one thing we do want to emphasize is that there, we do not have summer school for advancement or math. We do not have an acceleration program uh, for our students or incoming ninth grade students. Science, all ninth grade students are expected to take biology. Upon completion of this biology class, it will fulfill the life science requirement for both the college and graduation. You also need two years of PE, and if you remember, Colleges do not require PE for college entrance. However, you do need it to graduate high school, and it will need to be completed here on campus for your freshman and sophomore years. World languages. We have three different types of world languages on our campus. We have Chinese, Japanese, Spanish. As you can see, all three of those languages start at the beginning level as if you never had any experience before at level one and then all the way up until the AP level. We also have a program for those who speak Spanish within the home but may not know how to read or write and that if that sounds like your student then Spanish for Native Speakers 3 would be an appropriate placement. However, if you're just not too sure, maybe you might take Spanish class outside of your middle school or take a Japanese class outside. That, and you would like to take a placement test to really understand which level is the correct level for your student, then please attend one of our placement tests uh, that will be held on Wednesday, March 23rd. Chinese will be held from 4.15 to 6.15. Japanese will be held from 4.45 to 6.45, and then Spanish will be held from 4 to 6. Career technical education is also another graduation requirement of ours. As you can see there, we have a variety of CTE classes for our students here. Unfortunately, we only have food and nutrition open for our incoming ninth graders. So if your student is interested in food and nutrition and would like to take that class during their ninth grade year, they can definitely select it. However, they do have the other three years of high school, sophomore, junior, and senior year to fulfill the CTE requirement. And um, you can see we have other classes, digital photography, computer science, art of video, biotech, and engineering technology, if those sounds more interesting for your student, then you can wait until your sophomore, junior, or senior year. Visual and performing arts, we have a great variety of classes for our students to fulfill this one-year requirement for both high school and college um, entrance, uh, entrance admissions, or excuse me, college admissions. So we have art, ceramics, drama, tech theater, and three levels of dance. Within the music under the BAPA uh, category, all of our music classes does require the student to have the ability to read music in addition to one year of experience. And if students are interested in our higher levels of uh, music classes, we suggest them to check in with our music directors and as they are holding auditions. And we will give you more information um, at a later time. Support classes. Support classes, we have two main support classes. We have English support and guided studies. English support is really uh, focused on students who need to improve their writing, reading, or grammar. And they may not necessarily be at grade level just yet, and they may need that extra support to get to grade level. Guided studies, we, within that class, they provide both academic and social emotional support for our students. And within the class, they really work hard on focusing on study skills, time management, helping them think more critically about the work that the classwork that they're doing, working on their building and strengthening their leadership skills and character development. At Aragon, we have a 
uh, newspaper that many of you have may have heard about is also available online if you want to check it out is our Aragon Outlook. And if you have a student who is interested in wanting to get more experience as working as um, in journalism, we definitely have many positions available and you can apply for it. Your book is also another publication that we have um, annually and you can apply for it in September. So after starting the school year and also uh, we have a variety of positions open for students. Okay, so now let's get into some fun information um, because I know that you all are probably eager in um, the process of how to pick classes for ninth grade. Um, we uh, just finished our middle school counselor visits uh, last week with your students. So hopefully they came home and fulfill, you know, filled you in with all of the information that they've learned about Aragon. Uh, they also should have brought home a folder filled with a lot of valuable information. Um, tonight you are attending the new family info night. So thank you so much for being here. And that next step really is the student course programming. Um, and so we'll talk a little bit about that moving forward. By now, uh, you all should have received an email, and this email is sent to students that are approved to attend Aragon in the fall. Um, this is what the ninth grade course selection form looks like. Um, it came to you in a K through 12 form, um, fillable form that we're hoping is uh, user friendly and you'll be able to fill that in and send that back to us electronically. So when will I select my classes? So we have a, um, an option for you to actually meet with a, a person from our counseling staff via Zoom. We've set two dates up for this optional meeting. So if you get your course planning sheet and you feel pretty confident with the courses that you would like your student to take, you can fill out that uh, course planning sheet, submit that, and we will enter the courses for your student. Some of you may still feel like you have some questions that need to be answered um, or really would just like to go over the class selection with um, a member of our counseling staff. So we set aside two evenings, uh, Tuesday, March 15th from 4 to 7 p.m. and Thursday, March 17th from 4 to 7 p.m. Uh, back on March 1st, you would have received an email with the link to sign up for one of these appoint appointments. Um, and so if that is something that you are wanting to do, please don't hesitate to sign up for one of those slots. Um, we're hoping, like I said, that the, the course planning form is user friendly, but we are here these nights uh, to support you during that process. And one point that I just wanted yes. to say too, is that class enrollment is purely based on availability, not class size, or excuse me, and class size, not who enrolled first. I think that was a question that we both got a lot during our middle school visits, right, Ms. Sanguinetti? That is very true. And, and that, that thank you for mentioning that, because I think it, it's important to kind of ease everybody's minds that, you know, it's not a first come first serve uh, situation for class enrollment. So at this point, you know, we are uh, compiling the students' requests, and that is how we create our main master schedule uh, throughout the summer of um, how many courses we're going to be offering and when. So once we have we've completed um, your, your course programming sheet and you have submitted that, it's not necessarily the end of the road where you are locked in we give you a little bit more time to think about your selections and we even give you more time to make any changes if needed. So uh, the deadline for uh, schedule request is April 18th. So we really, really encourage you and your student to review the course requests um, and notify the counselor here at Aragon if there's any problems with your schedule or you need to make any changes. Um, we really stick tight to the April 18th deadline um, because of what I had mentioned, we really, uh, we start making that master schedule and we can't have, you know, many changes during that time. 
once um, all of our course selections have been finalized, um, a communication will be sent out to you in April, notifying you and your students of their course requests. Um, those may include uh, uh, alternates. And uh, like I had mentioned, students can make adjustments to their course requests up till April 18th. Ninth graders and all new transfer students, you will receive your final schedule at orientation in August, um, just prior to the start of school. And you know your, your course uh, selections and requests is how we build a student-centered master schedule. We wanna offer what our students are wanting and what they are choosing. So just to review those important dates, so we have that optional meeting set up with the counseling staff via Zoom. That would be on Tuesday, March 15th from 4 to 7 p.m. and Thursday, March 17th from 4 to 7 p.m. So please take a look in your emails if you'd like to sign up for one of those dates. August 5th, um, 2022 is going to be our new student orientation. This is a day that you do not want to miss. It is very important for your student to attend. Um, the, a lot of the early logistics are taken care of that day so that they could start fresh on that first day of school, which is tentatively August 10th, 2022. So exciting. Very excited. We are very excited to see your students um, in the fall. Hello, we are back now. Thank you. Um, I hope that you can hear me. I'm not sure if everyone can hear me now. Yep, Thank wonderful. You. Thank you so much. You all are asking wonderful questions in our chat. And I am actually now very, very happy that we were doing a recording of some of our pieces because the amount of questions that you have, which are awesome, really requires us to be going at it quickly. So I hope that you can see them, that you can um, feel like we're able to answer them. We, um, I do want to see really quickly if any of our PTSO members have joined us, if they would like to say something to the entire group live, if you are here with our PTSO, since we have, um, we have 200 people, over 200 people watching live on YouTube and also for our um, attendees here. So if you are one of our PTSO members and would like to say something, please use the raise your hand feature, um, or you could put something in the Q&A, of course, but if you, we are not here, then uh, we will. We will continue going. Okay, thank you so much. So we see some great questions in the chat. I didn't know in the meantime, Ms. Ho or Ms. Sanguinetti, if there's any that you want to answer live. Um, a couple that I wanted to answer live quickly, um, especially about the math uh, inventory test that took place at Aragon um, this last Saturday and also at Burlingame High School. Aragon and Burlingame both offer this math um, three years in two years program. And the test did take, take place last weekend, but we will be emailing students next week about um, how their results translate to being in the appropriate math course for their level. And we use the same scores at both Aragon and Burlingame. It's a program that both schools have. And we also check in with the current eighth grade math course that the student is taking and teacher recommendations. So we will be sending you specific information, but with that and with world language levels as well, please feel free to put on the course selection form what you are hoping and what you would like to request. Um, you know, we, we definitely want to make sure that we can support you in your, in your hopes and dreams for your classes for your ninth grade year. And so if there is some sort of a discrepancy or the level has to change for whatever reason, we'll work to switch that with you. So we will, although we are requesting that you turn that course selection form um, no later than March 20th, please, which is a Sunday, so by Sunday night, we will, in the beginning of April, send you a confirmation message, as, as Ms. Ho and Ms. Sanguinetti said, that gives you all the details about these are the courses that we have registered you for, and then you will have to April 18th, so a couple of weeks to then say, oh, we've changed our mind, or can we do this? And I did just answer somebody's question um, in the Q&A with our link to the counseling page where you can see the email address and phone number for Ms. Ho, Ms. Sanguinetti, Mr. Alicott, and um, Dr. Cervantes as well. So Ms. Ho and Ms. Sanguinetti, do you have something else that you want to share about any of the, um, I guess, frequency of certain questions that you're seeing or? 
No, I think it's great that you talked about the placement test. I think that was something that's on the minds of many of our families tonight. Um, so just to reiterate, is correct, we won't necessarily have your placement test scores uh, yet before you submit your form. However, if you could just simply select the course that you would wish to take for the language, and then what we will do is actually get your test score uh, from the language department and then place you into the class correctly. And who knows, it's probably going to be the same class that you might have selected. And the only thing that I'll add to that is, you know, please uh, check out our prospective stu um, incoming students page um, on our website. We put a wealth of information there for you, all of the links to sign up for these assessment tests. Our course catalog is linked there. So you could really take an, a more in-depth look at the classes that we offer. It gives a nice description of um, what to expect in the courses, as well as if there's any prerequisites for the courses. So definitely check out um, our prospective students page. Wonderful, thank you. And we are now going to share a little bit about our AVID program. Uh, two of our lead AVID teachers are again participating in our on-campus open house tonight uh, with the current family. So we have a presentation that they um, recorded for you. And again, we're gonna be answering those questions. We can answer the, the Q&A and we'll continue doing that. And then we'll, we'll be back after they're speaking. So thank you. Hi, Future Dons. My name is Miss Chiaro, and I teach the sophomore AVID class. I'm also one of the AVID co-coordinators. And I'm Miss Caldwell. I currently teach the AVID seniors, but I'll be teaching AVID freshmen in the fall, and I'm the other AVID co-coordinator. So you may be wondering, what is AVID? Um, AVID is a four-year college readiness program, and it stands for Advancement Via Individual Determination. Uh, it is a nationally recognized program, and AVID's mission statement is to close the opportunity gap and prepare all students for college readiness and success in a global society. So the AVID student is motivated to attend a four-year college. Uh, we want to help you help get you there. You want to get there. So together, we work to achieve that goal. Um, the AVID students also hardworking and individually determined. Um, they are willing to learn and use note-taking systems. Um, we follow the focus note-taking system that requires you to process your notes and connect with your notes and interact and engage with your notes so you remember the information from your math class, your English class, or your biology class. So AVID is a course that helps you uh, better prepare for success in those content areas. Um, AVID students also need assistance in navigating the college process. It may be completely new to them. They may be the first in their family to go to college. Um, they may be just completely um, like confused and need some more guidance. And we're here to guide you through that. Uh, the AVID student also has a minimum 2.5 GPA, but you know, 2.5 to 4.0 is a sweet spot because um, that is the GPA that will get you into a four-year school. So we work um, to help support you into being the best college applicant that you can be. How does it work? Well, earlier I mentioned that we um, strengthen note-taking skills. Um, we also strengthen your organizational skills. So, you know, we... AVID students have a three ring binder. Um, you know, it's a pretty big binder. Um, maybe you have AVID students at your school site and you know you see them carrying their, their big binder. And, and that's because um, organized students tend to be more successful. Um, they don't lose their homework. You know, they know exactly where their notes are. They know exactly what to study. Um, they know, you know, when the teacher asks for a graphic organizer, you know, they know exactly where it is and they pull it out. So, you know, we, we help you develop and strengthen those skills. Um, AVID students also participate in something called tutorials, and these are structured um, like study groups where together you identify a point of confusion um, from 
a problem in your content class, like in your English class, we bring it into Avid and then we work through it together to help you uh, come to an aha moment to understand the problem and to find a solution together. Um, so essentially, you know, we better prepare you for success in high school and in college and beyond in your chosen career. Uh, through, you know, college research and career research, you know, we want to make sure that, you know, you are pursuing what you are passionate about. And if you don't know what that is, that's fine. You know, we'll, we'll take quizzes, we'll do activities to kind of discover where our strengths lie. Um, also, in AVID, you become part of a community of learners. We like to call ourselves um, an AVID family, and not just because we're really close, but because we're all in it for the same reason, that we are here because we want to succeed, we want to go to a four-year school. So AVID is not only focused on the academics and post and that, you know, meeting that post high school goal, but we also build on a lot of other skills. And like Ms. Chiaro said, work on, you know, maintaining our family. And so we take time to learn leadership skills. We also do get to take college field trips, set foot on campus, um, and also bring in guest speakers. Um, and that can be guest speakers you know, for any which reason, a lot probably focused on career. Um, we do also, so each year, you know, when we're not in a pandemic, um, we do take a college field trip, both pretty locally and to Southern California, and then also do a cultural field trip where we get to go experience something pretty close in our community that Otherwise, students may not have the opportunity to access. So we've gone to the San Francisco MoMA. Um, I I'm not sure Ms. Chiaro can speak to a few more probably that we've done, but um, just getting yeah, out yeah. there and experiencing life beyond college. Yeah, the Academy of Science, the Exploratorium. Um, we saw the... Um, the uh, we saw Shakespeare uh, play with the um, African American Theater Company. Yeah, so we have a lot of fun in AVID as well. Um, and you, we also do spend time researching colleges and exploring careers. And you do a little bit of that each year while you are in AVID, um, focusing on different aspects of that research. This was from the Asian Art Museum. Our AVID student, Brian. Um, speaking of college field trips, we do each year take a SoCal field trip with our mainly sophomores um, and juniors, and we take a bus and load up the bus and head down south to visit colleges. Um, I know the last time I went on the trip, we saw UC Merced, Fresno State, um, Santa Barbara, and I'm forgetting one, um, but we've been to other places like Santa Clara University, San Jose State, um, San Francisco State, and we try to adventure around as much as we can to set foot on college campuses so students get not only the experience of being on a college campus, but also exploring campuses that they're potentially interested in. Yeah, we're getting ready for our Southern California field trip in about three weeks. We are also um, not only going to UCLA and um, Fresno and Cal State Fullerton and Loyola Marymount, but we're also going to Disneyland. So that'll be fun. Our application can be found at this link that you can see on the screen. Um, and then both mine and Ms. Kiaro's emails if you have any questions and wanted to contact us directly. All right. Well, thank you so much for listening to us. We hope to see you soon. Um, again, um, Avid apps can be found at that bit.ly link. Uh, make sure that um, you, know, you capitalize Avid and lowercase app the app. Okay, and thank you again to Ms. Chiaro and Ms. Caldwell for their information about AVID. And we did link in the Q&A our AVID webpage. I did want to um, remind you and Ms. Ho put in the chat, thank you, Ms. Ho, we are continually updating 
our incoming students page to have information about other questions you've had, such as when are the dance auditions or when will there be tryouts for football and when is the first day of school and when's orientation. So we will continually put that information there for you. So please continue going to that uh, spot on our website to get what you need. And of course, you're always welcome to email us or Mrs. Kardash, who really helps with that transition from eighth grade as well. Um, I do uh, see that we have a hand raised by Dahlia and we will happily answer that, but we'll wait to do the hand raised questions and the live questions until the end. We have another piece that we'd like to share about our activities and student life at Aragon. So we wanna do that. Um, and then we will we will gladly have you hand raise and, and do those too. Um, Ms. Ho, Ms. Sanguinetti, are you seeing other questions that, you know, trends in the questions that you'd like to answer live right now? We had a couple of questions about, you know, uh, first period off versus seventh period off and what that looks like. Um, you know, those are free, free periods for students. Um, our first period class starts at 830 in the morning. And so if your student were to take first period off, they would be coming in um, a little later at 10. And then if they take seventh period off, they are able to leave campus a little earlier. Um, and usually that's around 2.40 in the afternoon. And I think there was a question that says, is there any free periods? We do not have any quote unquote free periods uh, during the day. It would just be not at school first period or not at school seventh. So uh, all students will be required to have at least classes between second period through sixth period at the least. And we do recommend six classes for all incoming ninth graders. It will be a really good transition for them to come to our school. Uh, again, we want to emphasize that the seventh period day is really reserved for students who need, uh, whether it's a support class, they want to join one of our uh, great programs here, such as AVID or leadership, uh, or even our music program, if they intend to stay in music for four years, which is why a lot of students are eager to come to Aragon for our visual and performing arts department. Definitely. And I did just want to say one more thing. There are some great questions about that course selection form that came out. Just to repeat, um, and especially for those of you who may be watching this as a recording later and not seeing the Q&As, uh, we sent out via Informed K-12 as the platform, but it came from the Aragon Counseling Department. We sent that out about midday today, the incoming ninth grade course selection form. It was sent only to one email address for the family. It was sent to the primary email address that was used to register the student with the San Mateo High School District and only for students who are currently registered at Aragon. So you wouldn't have received that if you are on the wait list for Aragon. If you are accepted off the wait list into Aragon, we will make sure that you get that form so you can fill it out for us, even if it's later into the summer, because sometimes you don't find out about until then. But we will definitely make sure you get set up with your classes. Um, and on that form, we would like for you to select those um, three additional classes you'll read in the fine print. You know, we've already selected three for you. You'll select three more to have your full six classes for the year. And, you know, if there is a, a reason for a seventh request, there's a space for that. So when you see alternates at the bottom, that's for if for some reason, the sixth course that you've selected is full. For example, if you selected to take Spanish two, um, and for some reason that doesn't work with your schedule or it's full, generally Spanish doesn't fill up. So you don't have to worry about that. But you, we would have those alternates of, okay, well, instead I might like to take art or something like that. Uh, we wanna have you hear a little bit from our students and from our director of student activities about student life. So we'll go to that and we'll still uh, be speaking with you um, via the chat on uh, text. Hi, welcome to Aragon. My name is Melissa Perino. I'm the director of student activities at Aragon and I teach the leadership classes. Hello, my name is Ben Wen. I'm currently a junior and I'm also the Aragon Associated Student Body President. Hello, my name is Christian Wong. I'm also a junior and I'm the Associate Student Body Vice President. Hello, my name is Ava and I'm the uh, ASB Secretary. Hi guys, my name is China. I'm a junior and I'm your Aragon Associated Student Body Treasurer. Excellent. And we get to talk to you about the fun part of high school, which is student life and what does it look like to be an Aragon student. 
Whenever I go to the middle schools, um, the students are always really nervous about what high school is going to be like. Um, the school is much bigger. You're with kids who are, you know, legally adults. So like, what does this look like? And one thing that I always point freshmen to come take a look at is the, the Aragon is board that is located outside the leadership room over an A hall. And this was an activity that we had the student body do where we wrote Aragon is and then handed out Sharpies and took a look at the words that people would use to describe our community. And over here are the words that come up the most, most often on the board. We are inclusive. We don't exclude others. We are diverse. We are accepting, welcoming, warm. You see the word Ohana show up on the Aragon Is board quite a bit because we are a very connected community. We have lots of fun together. Um, and we believe very strongly there's a place for everyone. Um, and we know that, um, that, not everyone experiences that in school, um, but here at Aragon, we do feel very strongly that you're coming into a strong community that supports, uh, of supports where people support one another. Um, we know that you are by now are probably experts at transition. You have transitioned out of school in March of 2020. You have transitioned to distance learning. You are now transitioned back into the school with masks. Um, and so you've had a lot of experience with transitions. Um, with high school, the number one thing that we want you to think about when you're coming to high school is what opportunities are there for me to get involved or to try something new? We want you to take healthy risks. When One of the benefits of coming to a school of 1,700 kids is that we offer so many or are able to offer so many new um, uh, opportunities for you. There are new sports that you've never tried out for, new classes you've never heard of before, um, new traditions to take part in. Um, dances, you know, that maybe didn't exist in the last couple of years. So when you come to Aragon, we want you to come in with an open mind and we want you to get involved and get connected right away. All studies show that students not only perform better academically, but enjoy high school and have fun um, when they are connected and when they are involved in their school. So that's what we hope for you. Now, we want you to know that we already have a lot of supports in place to make sure your ninth grade experience is super awesome. And one of the first ways that we do that is through Link Crew. Link Crew leaders are about, it's about 120 uh, 12th and 11th graders who volunteer their time to make sure that you as, as an incoming ninth grader are connected to the community, you are having fun, you know how to navigate the school. And if you're having a problem, whether it's personal, it's academic, um, that they are there to support you. You'll meet your link crew leaders on August 5th. That is our orientation day for all incoming ninth graders. And that's a day where we play games, have fun, have lunch. Um, we introduce you to your locker and how to get into your locker. We show you where the bathrooms are. So that August 5th day is the first day where you'll, you will meet a link crew leader. And you do activities throughout the year with your link crew leader, like pumpkin carving, or they send you like little notes in the inner campus mail, letting you know that you're doing a great job. Um, so we use students to help support other students um, in our community. We also have an amazing staff and faculty that at Aragon we call staffalty to make it shorter. Um, your teachers, your, all, your adults on campus are super invested in you, your learning, your experience. We want you to have a good time in high school. Um, and so you have staffalty that will help support the learning and the academic sides of it. You also have an academic counselor and an academic advisor whose jobs are to help you with any academic struggles that you're having. Um, we have wellness counselors that give social and emotional support, um, an amazing counseling, uh, wellness counseling office um, that you can go in if you're in distress or you need to talk to somebody um, in order to be able to then focus on the learning. And we also have college career and financial aid services um, to help you with college and the journey to college. Lastly, in our schedule, we also have two days of embedded time where you can get help one-on-one -on -one with a teacher. So if you're struggling or you need to make up work or you want one-on-one -on -one help with your essay, whatever it is that you need time for, for your group to get together um, to work on a group project, we have flex time embedded into the day to make sure that all students, all 100% of our students have access to one-on-one -on -one time with their teachers. Um, so we want to make sure that your transition from middle, to, middle school to high school is as smooth and seamless as possible and that you know that you're supported. Um, this is happening um, not in 2021. This is happening in August 2022, August 5th, in fact. Um, the date will be shown later in the slideshow. Um, and this, um, this slideshow will be posted on our um, Aragon website. If you go to our school, there's a tab that says Perspective and Incoming Students. 
If you click on that, we will have this slide deck linked there um, so that you can always go back and take a look at some of the videos. But here you can see the link crew leaders. Um, these were our freshmen, sorry, from August of 2021. Um, so these were our current freshmen um, participating um, in our orientation. Um, and so your upperclassmen, your link crew leaders will guide you around school, give you high school tips. They check in with you monthly to make sure you're doing okay and that your experience here is great. Um, we believe that all dons belong and we want you to meet new friends. And so our orientation happening on August 5th of 2022 is where you'll be going through all of these fun experiences with your link crew leader. Okay, and now I'm gonna pass this on over to China. Perfect, thank you so much. Okay, hi everybody, um, I'm China. And I'm going to be going over some extension about student life, going more into depth on how you can get involved, how you can make an impact, how you can make these 180 days on our campus um, the best for your first year. So let's get started. So getting involved, there are so many things to do. We have so much on our campus from clubs, sports, theaters, events, ranging from every single aspect that you could ever think of, really. Um, and there are a bunch of ways to participate in our student life. So we're going to go through some listings of these topics. Okay, so moving on to spirit days and games. So for leadership, we really focus on emphasizing our climate and emphasizing all the spirit that we hold on our campus. Um, going through like spirit days, we dress up in fun themes, whether this ranges from um, dressing up for our homecoming spirit week or our winter formal spirit week or prom. And you can have photo shoots with your friends. We have a really lively and vibrant Instagram page that you guys can go follow. You have photo shoots with your friends where we post these photos. You can also earn spirit points for your class. We have a Dom Baton, which is basically a spirit stick. And every single time that we have a rally or we have a spirit week, you can gain points for your class. And that'll go into a system where you can have your Dom Baton up in your class hallway. And then we also have football games, which are really just emphasizing one of the biggest things that a lot of people think of when they go into high school. We have um, themed football games. We have Red Sea, where everybody dresses out in red. We all deck out our blackout game where you dress out in black. So when you would take a photo or you would see our stands, we would all be color coordinated and spirited. We also have Pink Out for breast cancer awareness, where we really emphasize our saviors and warriors who have battled with breast cancer. This is during October. And you basically wear all pink to put in support. We also have an LGBTQ game on October as well. Just out in rainbow, support all the people on our campus who are exploring their sexuality and are able to emphasize it here as well in a safe space. And then we also have home football and basketball games. Um, these occur on our campus, of course, whether it's against our rivals or other teams that you can go to every single Friday. And it's really fun. And I really recommend going to them they're great. Our football team does an amazing job. Okay. And then student life with rallies and school dances. So all of our school dances are really a big part of our school as well. We have um, homecoming and we have formal, and then we have prom for our juniors and seniors. Homecoming occurs around November, October time, or formal is more in winter around February and March. And they all focus on different themes. So they're really... We have theme spirit weeks beforehand as well. They're really fun. They're all welcome. We have a great time. And then all school rallies. We have big rallies in our gyms. We've been having them outside um, during this year because of COVID. But we hope that we have um, in-gym rallies next year. So we have dance team performances, cheer. We have teachers. We've had one where teachers have performed TikTok dances. That was really fun. And then sports teams have community bonding games. And we just have our amazing spirit. So we get all of our class colors and you dress up and then you go on your side of the gym and you basically have just a beautiful array of all of our spirit through all of our classes. And then we also have many lunchtime rallies where we go into depth with just like little tiny performances that focus on kind of some on-campus events during our like spirited months. So we're gonna move on to clubs. Yeah, so uh, clubs. Um, clubs are also a big part of the high school experience here at Aragon. We have 71 clubs. So if there's a club for almost any interest, whether it be math, astrology, um, anything, there's most likely a club for it. And if not, you can also create your own club. So clubs will be just groups of students that will meet generally at lunch uh, one day a week. And generally the officers for that club, the, the student leaders, will plan an agenda, they'll plan something to do, and you'll engage as a club in those interests. The club is a great way to not just explore your passion, meet new people, 
Um, yeah, so some of the ways you can find clubs is our club fair, which happens in August and January for um, beginning of every semester, where all the clubs will set up in a center of courts um, at Aragon, and pretty much you'll be able to go around and see what clubs are available at Aragon and see what interests you. And again, as I said, you also have the opportunity to start your own club um, for your own interest if they're not, not already at it at Aragon. So another big aspect of Aragon is sports. We have a lot of student athletes here. We have 17 sports at Aragon. I know there's all the three seasons, the fall, winter, and spring sports. And students, you can try for um, any sport. Depending on the sport, there's generally a freshman level, JV level, and, and varsity level. And a part of that is going to maxpeps.com. You can see rosters, schedules, tryouts, merchandise, and all different information about sports. And for all of you, the, all of you the eighth graders that are uh, trying to try out for a fall sport, make sure you get your physical ASAP. And um, all information for about the sports is on the Aragon website. Yeah, so here are, um, here are the sports, fall sports, cross country, girls golf, girls tennis, girls volleyball, water polo, football, and side on cheer. Winter sports is basketball, wrestling, soccer, competitive cheer, and again, side on cheer. The spring sports are badminton, baseball, softball, golf, lacrosse, swimming, tennis, track and field, volleyball. There's clearly a lot. This might seem overwhelming, but if you go back to their own website, there's also a lot of information on difficulty and trying out for each of these sports. Okay, so if you're interested in things out in sports, Aragon also offers a lot of um, other extracurriculars. We have a fall musical and a spring play. This year we did, um, and then there were none, which was sort of a horror themed um, play. And then later we're gonna do Legally Blonde. If you're interested in acting or just showing off your theater um, experience, we also have a tech theater program and there's a lot that goes into these plays. Um, so it's fun to be a part of or to watch either way. It's a great way to be involved in our community. So we also have leadership. Um, if you're interested, leadership, uh, we have a leadership program and a student council program. These are both great ways to learn how to be leaders in your school and to make decisions um, as a representative of the student body. So more specifically about leadership, um, this is, we have three leadership classes, um, in each one, we all contribute to our school-wide events and mainly just to make the student body enjoy their experience. And also we, uh, we hold both traditional and new made up events. Um, but the main purpose of leadership is to build our school's culture, um, celebrate Aragon's community and show different aspects of all the student body. Um, we connect with the school to make everybody feel like they're a part of the school and um, everybody is included. And obviously we plan all our events. And what's very important is it's the students planning events for students. So obviously we get the student point of view and we're making things for everybody to enjoy from a student point of view. So if you're interested in leaderships, we will be, we have an application link on the screen right now. So bit.ly slash incoming AHS lead app 22s. You can find this website on the Aragon website. You click onto our schools and then perspective and incoming students. Scroll to the bottom of the page for the leadership app. And then um, the instructions are very clear on that. You guys fill it out and uh, we'll contact you back once you have filled out that application. Excellent. And Ben, just to add to the leadership application, so if you are interested in enrolling in the leadership class um, and planning um, events for our community and learning how to be a leader, um, you're going to fill out the application and we start looking at applications for incoming nines um, on um, the first full week of, um, of March. So you want to get those applications in as quickly as possible. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks, Ms. Brenna. Okay. So we also have class council. Ava touched on this briefly, but class councils, um, if you are interested in class councils, what class council does is they are elected officers that will serve your class. So for you guys, it'll be the class of 2026. Class council conducts class fundraisers and using the money they fundraise, they can plan future class activities, class spirit gear, and they also can plan class bonding activities. Class council is an incredible opportunity for you to get extremely involved within the Aragon community. and. 
we highly recommend it if you're interested in student government and serving the community. Class council elections will be during the fall of 2022, so you do not need to apply for those just yet. And once you do come to Aragon, you will we will make sure to publicize it so you guys know when you can uh, run for class council elections. Um, other things that they do are they plan town halls, so they focus on giving students a voice. Um, overall, great opportunity if you want to get involved. Excellent. Yes. Yeah, so get involved through leadership or get involved as um, representative of class councils. Um, so like we said, we're going to post this video on the Aragon website under um, our school and then under perspective and incoming um, students. But we've linked here some of the videos to give you a sense of what kind of community you're coming into. Um, our Halloween rally is always a huge tradition. It's a favorite because every um, all the departments uh, dress up in theme and then we compete for student votes. Um, English team lost this year. I'm very sad. Um, we also have our last lip dub that we did. This is all pre-pandemic. Um, we also have like our staffalty, you know, besides TikTok dances that were mentioned before, we have um, staffalty reading mean tweets or Aragon talking about our favorite memories. So sometimes, you know, as a parent or as a kid who hasn't been on um, our campus yet because we weren't allowed to have shadowing days back in October, this gives you kind of an idea of what our community looks like um, if you haven't yet stepped foot um, onto our community. Make sure that you prep your wardrobe for some red and black. We wear red and black on Fridays. And please mark your calendars for August 5th because this is the best day um, for your student to first start their transition to Aragon High School. Um, so August 5th is the day that you do not want to miss. Um, all my freshmen who miss this day always say, it feels like everyone knows what they're doing, but I don't know what I'm doing. And I said, oh yeah, you must orientation, huh? Because orientation day is such a crucial day for that first transition um, to our school and to our community and to getting to know kids from other schools. So you want to make sure, tell your tell your um, your family, your, your guardians, tell them to mark August 5th down on the calendar. Okay, um, so again, this web, this um, presentation will be linked for you on the Aragon website, so you can go back and look at the videos. You can get the Bitly for the leadership application if you're interested in joining leadership or AVID or any of the other things that we've spoken about. Um, and we are so excited to welcome you here to Aragon. We know it, you're going to have a great time, have a great experience, and um, we're really excited to connecting you to the community. Thanks so much, and we'll be here in just in just a second. We'll be um, answering some questions that you have. So if there's anything that I've said or Ben has said or any of our ASB officers or anything that you heard earlier from our counselors or from our AVID team, um, stay put and you can put your question either in the chat or you can ask it in just a sec and we will be able to answer for you. All right. Thanks so much. Bye. I would love to give a huge shout out and appreciation to everyone who participated in doing that, our students. And I also definitely want to give much appreciation and admiration to um, Armando, our Spanish interpreter right now, who has been interpreting every single bit of this. So um, muchas gracias, Armando. Um, and we would love to be able to answer your questions. If you have some live that you would like to answer and we can promote you to the panelists and whether you wanna show your video or not is fine, but we can ask you um, if you'd like to say something live, we can do that. You can raise your hand and we can allow you to talk or you can also continue to put it in the chat and we'll be monitoring that. So I see that you on, you have your hand raised. So I'll allow you to talk really quick so you can ask. And we'll see if they, if they, would like to or not. If not, then we'll wait. And also, if one of our PTSO members, if you have come, please let us know and raise your hand too. Um, we're waiting to see if Yuan wants to say something, but perhaps not. So we can ask again later. Please, you could raise your hand again later if you'd like to. And if anybody else has some questions, please let us know if any of our PTSO members are here that would like to participate. I do see that there was someone that said that they did not get the email form today and this um, and that their you know, student is registered. So definitely um, I would reach out to Mrs. Kardosh unless you were just placed into Aragon today, March 10th, you may have not received it. But um, if as of yesterday, you were definitely registered at Aragon, you wanna check to make sure what email address you used. 
uh, to be registered and then check that email and of course check the spam folder. Um, there were a few emails that bounced back, but we are working, we tried to fix those. So definitely reach out to Mrs. Kardash tomorrow if that, if that did not happen. Um, there's a question about orientation on August 5th, which is so fun. And that starts at eight o'clock in the morning. Uh, might be 8.30, but I would plan for eight o'clock in the morning and going till three, 3.30. They're gonna take their school photos that day for their ID card and everything. Um, so Chin Wen, I'm gonna allow you to talk because I see your, your hand raised. So welcome, let us know your question. Hi, can you guys hear me? Yes. Thanks so much. This has been a really awesome and exciting, fun time. Um, here's a question. So uh, my son is uh, ha is taking a Russian School of Mathematics. And um, we understand that in order to kind of be accepted to bypass the geometry section, we would need to take either UC Scout or BYU, something with a UC accredited. So once we submit the transcript for geometry, uh, we do not have transcript for Algebra 1. Will that work? That's a great question. Thank you. Do, do one of you want to answer about that? There's so many math and I'll put the FAQs again for math in the chat as well. Yeah, I think so. Can I, can I double check with you? So right currently right now in eighth grade, your student is in math eight. Um, he's in Borel, the yeah. non-compacted math. Basement. Yeah, so that would be, that would be the math eight. Um, you know, we, because the Russian School of Math is um, not four-year college approved, um, we really encourage students to take that next level that they would be in after their eighth grade math. I understand that your, your student probably is strong in math, um, but we really need to see those courses on a transcript. Um, uh, geometry is, you know, algebra, it sounds like your student is going to get into higher levels once they're here at Aragon, but it's that geometry course that is really important to be on um, a high school transcript. And students that are taking courses over the summer, um, you know, what we're seeing is, you know, they're taking a full year of a math course and condensing it down into, you know, six to eight weeks. And so we're really seeing students enter um, in these higher level math courses um, lacking knowledge. And so I think that is part of the reason that our math department feels really strongly that we really want students to accelerate here in house. And that's why we have created these um, that accelerated math programs so that students really don't have to go out and find BYU classes or UC Scout. Um, you know, we, we have these classes in house for you. Thank you so much, Chin Wen, for the question. I also put the um the math FAQs in our chat right there for you to be able to see it. And of course, you're more than welcome to email us to continue to ask further questions. And we do have that virtual um, optional programming event that is going to happen either on Tuesday of next week or on Thursday. And that link was also sent out both last week and then today with the course selection form. So if you have more specific questions for counselors, um, you know, that's also another place too. But does um, any other questions, please feel free to raise the hand and come on to ask or to again, put it in the Q&A. We are very happy to ask. I do see a, a quick question that's in the, um, that's in the Q&A right now about orientation. If there's an option of it happening before August 5th and unfortunately, no, there is not. August 5th is the magical day. We have our link crew leaders, which are our upperclassmen who are training to make it a super exciting, fun team building day. And they are doing that August um, 4th. And so, yes, August 5th is the day. However, if the student can't attend, we still want to make the welcome very, very special. And that would happen the morning of the first day of school on August 10th in the morning. They would come early. We'll make sure that they get to do a tour and still meet their link crew leader. Let's see any other questions or if any else, anyone else wants yeah, to raise their hand. We have a question about um, the Aragon ID number. And so, oh, yeah, when you receive that, that would have came with the email saying that they are registered and are coming to Aragon um, next year. Correct. Um, but actually, something that's nice is that if you received your course selection form today to that email, the one that we've been talking about over and over, we did also pre-populate that 
with the seven digit ID number as well, which will, you will find in the upper right hand corner. So you can find your official Aragon ID as well. Another question about orientation, is it just for students? Yes, it is just for students. So uh, we will definitely be excited for a PTSO welcome to new families that starts within the first week of school. We're, you know, we're very excited about that. And the PTSO will let you know more about that when the time comes. And so that will be for parents and guardians, but for the students, August 5th is, is their special day. Um, in regards to the question about the BYU geometry class, when is the deadline to submit the transcript to make it into the compacted math program? Our compact, compacted math program starts with geometry. So it's a two-year program. The first year is geometry algebra two, and the second year is algebra two and pre-calculus. Um, so we have that here. <laughs> I do have a few other questions about the math placement um, test again that was offered to both Aragon and Berlin Game that took place last Saturday and the uh, retake test, if Saturday wasn't a possibility, was yesterday at the district office on the 9th. So if you were unable to make either of those and you are still feeling very desperate to need to take it, you can reach out to assessment at smuhsd.org and see if there is a future possibility as well. Let's see if there's any other questions. There was another question about the orientation on August 5th, if the student can come to campus to take their picture ahead of time and get their computer. And actually, no, um, not on the Monday or Tuesday, unfortunately, because we are going to be doing professional development for our teachers and we don't have our uh, photographers here to do the ID cards or anything on those days. So there will be a makeup day for photos when the photographers are coming back a little bit later in August, um, and the, probably the week after school starts, but the time to come would be that morning of the first day of school for any of uh, the students that can't make the August 5th orientation. And we will definitely make sure that, that they get that information, but we hope, hope, hope that that August 5th day can, can work. Um, there is a, another question about, will students have the chance to visit the campus? Oh my goodness, this is a fantastic question because Aragon is actually undergoing a lot of construction this summer, there is going to be a lot of um, replacement of certain panels and painting and construction and actually the entire campus will be closed off, even to me. Uh, and so I will be working out of the district office this summer because uh, it will be a huge construction zone. So unfortunately, there is not an option to come and visit during the summer, but uh, that first week of August, that special Friday will, will be great. Wondering if there's uh, other... Let's see. We had... There was a question there about AP, Japanese, and Spanish. Um, I'm not really understanding the last part of the question. Does this mean he won't have full time to complete Japanese placement test? Um, what I'm reading in this question is that your student is probably fluent in Japanese and wants to go directly into AP Japanese, or I'm not sure if you're asking, you know, will they have time to work them their way up to AP Japanese. Um, if they're coming in and they're ready for AP Japanese, I think that's why we said to kind of wait um, because any year that student chooses to, to take that AP class, um, you know, they could do that. But the Spanish, if they're starting out at Spanish one, you'd wanna start, you know, in your ninth grade year so that you have time to um, get as many years as of that language under your belt as possible. Um, let's see, if a student is taking Algebra 1 in eighth grade at their school and geometry via BYU, can they sign up for Algebra 2 for ninth grade? So uh, no, you would sign your student up still for geometry. Um, you would let us know your plans. I think um, the, our biggest issue that we run into is that our master schedule is built off of, um, it's very student-centered and, and we build it off of student requests. Um, and so we don't, schedule students as if they're going to summer school. Um, so you would be signing up for geometry. If we can accommodate you space-wise, then it is a possibility, um, but there's no guarantee that there will be space in Algebra 2 come the fall. Thank you. There's a question from Julie, and Julie, I can certainly allow you to talk if you'd like, um, because you have your hand raised. And so I could put that there if you wanna ask, or if not, you can stay muted and we can go back to the chat, but always nice to have someone if you want to. Maybe, maybe not. 
we possibly, it, it might not be working. So, so Julie, we do, we have students that do take seven classes in their ninth grade um, because they want to take music and they also want to take language. Um, yes, we, we, we do have students doing that. I, I think when we say we encourage students to take six classes, um, you know, typically a full load is six classes. And so coming from eighth grade, coming from a, a few years of a pandemic, you know, we're just really wanting students to pay attention to the load that they're giving themselves. Um, it's their first time coming on a high school campus and um, we want them to have balance and we want them to be happy and we want them to feel good about the classes that they're taking. And um, so, so that's why we encourage students to take six classes, but we know that there are students that, you know, really want to be involved in certain programs that we have here on campus. And so we will try to accommodate as best we can. And Algebra 1 is the next class after Math 8. So if your student is in Math 8 currently, then they would be choosing Algebra 1 on their co course programming sheet. Thank you so much for these wonderful questions. These are great questions. I would say definitely just make sure that your Oh, I hear a little bit of feedback on something. I'm not sure which one. Um, I would, but I would say definitely make sure that your uh, email address that you have registered is staying current and that you are checking it as we send things throughout the summer, especially that primary email address that you registered with when we are sending you messages about course selection. Um, there is sometimes where we send it via email, but sometimes we might send something in the, in the snail mail as well. And the district will be sending via the snail mail that very, very important verification code for the data confirmation process. This is for you to be able to have an account with ARIES. They send that in July and it does get sent via USPS to your home address, the primary one. And so you wanna definitely make sure you're on the lookout for that in July and that you register and that you complete all of our, you know, registration packet data confirmation before orientation on the 5th. That's very important to keep on the lookout. But a lot of communications from us will come through email as well. Your uh, students will all get their Aragon and San Mateo Union High School District email address once they uh, arrive on orientation day. So they will receive that and all that information and, and crow books and everything there. Um, there is a question from Emily about a math makeup test. I don't know of any other math inventory makeup tests. The only one that I knew about was the one from yesterday at the district. So if you do email assessment at smuhsd.org, you might be able to find other information and um, results from that and, and the classes that students are going to be placed into will contact you specifically next week if that was something, um, if, if you had taken the exam. Um, and that, so that's a question that's there. And so we will be sending out um, the course placement next week. Let's see, there's a question about uh, the option of picking any elective or VAPA in period seven. That's a great question. You actually can't pick which period you're gonna take a class unless it's the zero period um, for that PE. But other than that, you're not actually picking which period. We That's part of our big master Sudoku puzzle when we're putting all of the students together. I don't know, Ms. Anguinetti or Ms. Ho, if you have something else that you wanna to add to that piece. I think it just goes back to our recommendations. Um, you know, We are recommending students take six classes unless they are choosing to be in a program uh, you know, for longevity, they want to take things, you know, ninth, 10th, 11th, and 12th grade. Um, if they are, you know, just picking an elective, um, I would, I would still stay with the recommendation of, you know, six classes. There's some other um, ones here. I do see Yuko, you have your hand raised, so I will um, bring you on so you can ask a, a question. We'll continue answering in the chat too. So Yuko, if you'd like to say something, you're more than welcome to unmute to do that. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, hi. So I have a question. So my son is fluent in Japanese. I'm the one who just um, typed in the Q&A. Um, so he wants to uh, skip all these Japanese classes and take AP Japanese. And he's learning Spanish and he wants to hopefully get into Spanish 4 and he's a 10th grader. So um, how is it possible for him to take two placement tests on the same day? Oh, that's a great question. Thank you so much. So I would say, um, and I do believe that I put the email addresses for both Hosoi Sensei and also for 
Senor Achiever, I did put that in the Q&A in order for you to be able to email them directly and see how long the placement test is. Um, and so you, I would recommend though that you still sign up for both of the placement exams, um, you know, that you complete that Google form twice actually that is on the incoming uh, students page. So, so you register two times. So complete the form once for Japanese and complete it again for Spanish. And we'll see it on there and um, we'll, we'll try to figure out if there's a way to stagger the timing or maybe it won't take that long or uh, maybe there's another option. So we, we will work with you on that for sure. Thank you. Wonderful question about cell phones. Um, oh. Yes, so uh, students are allowed to have their cell phones. We have not adopted the yonder patches, uh, pouches that um, San Mateo is piloting. Um, a lot of our teachers uh, have cell phone uh, pockets that are, when they walk in, your student can put their cell phone in the pocket. It stays next to the teacher. Um, because they also have their Chromebooks on them. So there, there really isn't a need for a cell phone during class time. Um, and so hopefully you all can encourage your student to um, not necessarily need, you know, use their cell phone during the school day. We understand that cell phones are important because you probably need to get a hold of them, but um, they will be provided a Chromebook. And so there's just so many distractions with the Chromebook, the cell phones, friends that, you know, we really would like to narrow down the electronics. Yes. Okay, Trisha, we have a question from you. Thank you very much. If you'd like to unmute mute yourself and let us know. And perhaps not either. I can wait another couple of seconds. Okay, thank you. Well, if you want to unmute yourself later, or if you want to raise your hand again later, you're more than welcome to, and that will work too. And then we also have a question, let's see here, for do we keep the middle school Chromebook? No, you don't keep the middle school Chromebook. You um, are going to get your own San Mateo Union High School District Chromebook um, that you are going to receive at orientation. So you will be returning your middle school Chromebook to, to the middle schools. Let's see. Oh, and this is a great question from Colleen. Is it possible to confer with a counselor or language teacher prior to course selection? Yes, we are going to be able to have you do that um, in the March 15th or March 17th next week. One of those virtual appointments. If you want to go and make one of those appointments, you can absolutely do that. That will, that will work. And just know that we will support you in every way um, with your student to make sure that they are successful in their classes mm -hmm. and that they we're providing them opportunities so that they can access their education. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Oh, there's a, a great question here from Rama about, can you bring your own laptop from home instead of the school Chromebook? Yes, you can, students do, um, but we are fully functional with the with the Chromebooks as well. So you, but it, but it is possible for students to bring their own devices. Um, let's see, we do have auditions for band and for jazz band and whatnot. And Mr. Chen and Mr. Gallagher will have that information on our webpage. We'll make sure we put it there and that we are sending that out for you also. Uh, let's see, in regards to any foster care benefits, um, we definitely have resources set up for our um, homeless and foster youth to make sure that they have uh, materials for school. Uh, we provide um, well, this year, uh, all of our meals are free, but we also provide um, other, op you know, other resources throughout the school year for, for our, our foster youth. Including buses. Um, or Including buses. Bus passes. Thank passes. You. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So thank you so much. We had over 200 participants throughout the night. We had it on YouTube on here. We had 148 questions that you all asked, which was great for us, keeping us all busy. Um, if you have anything that you would like to say quickly as you're leaving, you can um, please do that if, if you'd like. We'd love to hear a little goodbye from you, but um, we just want to thank you so much for joining us this evening. We can't wait to have you here um, at Aragon, and we look forward to seeing your faces in person in the fall. Okay, take good care. Thank you, everybody. Thank, thank you. For you. All thank, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. And thank you again to Armando. Man, you are a rock star. Thank you so much.
Thank you, everybody.